All right, guys, so this is a video on how to just check your strainers aboard your vessel. Um, these are Graco new style ARG 750s. Um, this is just the size they put in for this, for this boat, but um, they're the same strainer for even larger boats. They just make them bigger. So your first step, uh, obviously on this boat, we have one for the generator. We have one for your air conditioning. If these strainers get clogged with grass or sand, uh, the generator will not get cooling water, raw water. So the impeller will run dry and the impeller will burn out. That impeller is rubber in the seawater pump. Okay. So then your generator is going to shut down, overheat. So here's a Lester Beak right here. It's going to throw two codes there. Exhaust temp gets too hot. And that impeller is right there. So then we got to go in there and replace that impeller. Vice versa for your air conditioner. If this air conditioner strainer gets clogged up, your air conditioner is not going to cool. There's your air conditioning pump right there. Um, and it's not going to get supplied and that's going to shut down as well. It's going to throw a high pressure code. So it's really important that every time you come to your boat that you're checking these strainers to make sure nothing like that will happen during the day. Uh, so let's get started. So first, first thing you got to do is you got to turn the seacock off. Okay, these seacocks right here are just uh, standard ball valve um, seacocks, and they're down there. So you simply reach down there, turn the valve off, 90 degrees, and that'll stop the water flow. Now, your plastic caps right here, and also you need to inspect all this too, you know, Everything here on intake, on water intake stuff, you know, it's double hose clamped, which this is. You need to make sure you don't have any leaks going on. Uh, all that stuff, you know, these can break over time. Um, they shouldn't at least corrode and break or anything like that, but if they get old, they can. Um, so notice what that cap says, hand tight only. Okay, these strainers, uh, only hand tight. You don't need a pair of pliers or uh, the fancy, you know, deck key tool to get these strainers off. Um, it has a rubber o-ring, hand tight, snug is just fine. So it should come right off. So I'll go ahead and turn the other seacock off. And we'll hop in here. Now, one issue I've had with this boat in particular and how they just set it up, a lot of times these strainers, they'll be on their own through hole. So like right under here, it'll go through the hole and it'll, and it'll be mounted to its own seacock. But they didn't set this boat up that way. They did their own seacock right here with a through hole, a ball valve, and they ran this hose up to the strainer. Well, what I've had happen is there's grass gets up in this strainer right here, or up in this hose rather, okay? So that, it, it'll completely restrict the water flow to the strainer, and then that whatever system will run hot. And I've had to take this apart and shove a screwdriver down in there to, uh, <clears throat> to restore the water flow and, and bust that grass out. Oh. So that happens sometimes as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and take this cap off. Okay, it's good, tan tight. Now these, now this plastic into this brass or this bronze, um, we can add a little bit. It's always normal to get a little bit of that. Make sure that's still off. Okay, now see the strainer is still leaking, okay? Even though the seacock or the ball valve is off, all right? So I gotta wiggle it and adjust it because it's obviously not shutting it off. There it goes, I think it finally stopped leaking. Sometimes they get a little funny like that. Um, so the strainer, this one has plastic baskets. It's nice and clean, okay? So whoever was here obviously check the strainer last. Now, what happens here in South Florida is that these boats that have these air conditioners and have these generators, they go to the sandbar. And when they sit on the sandbar for two to three minutes, or uh, two to three minutes, two to three hours at a time, uh, it will suck the sand off the bottom. Because a lot of times here in Florida, we're uh, you know, we're anchoring, we're sitting in about maybe three to four feet of water with these boats that draft a couple feet. So sand is right there under the hull. So it'll suck it up. 
And what you have to pay attention for is you got to look in the bowl and make sure that there's no sand sediment down in the bottom. If there's sand sediment down in the bottom, your basket will not go all the way back down. It'll stick up. Okay, and then I've, ha I've actually seen people force them down in here and break the basket. So how do you get the sand out of the bottom of the bowl? There's a little black drain plug right there at the bottom of it. You pull that dra black drain plug and uh, you get a water hose in the boat. Now you can do it with a strainer and you can open the ball valve back up and introduce salt water, but then you're introducing salt water into your bilge as well. So if you are picky about that and you don't want salt water in your bilge, um, which is obviously recommended, then grab a water hose and stick it down in here and flush it out real good. And then all that sand will pour out that bottom black drain. But we're good. We don't have any sand in this bowl. So we can uh, put the strainer back together. So I'll put the basket back in. And obviously if this basket had grass or sand or shells in it, we'd take it to the dock. We'd rinse it out with fresh water. Make sure the basket goes back in flush. Now look, this is kind of hard too. These plastic caps into these um, seacocks or the or strainer rather, it's kind of tricky to get that thread going perfect. Remember, hand tight, just like so. All right, let's do the other one. Seacock's off, pull the basket out, basket's clean. Do I have any sand in the bottom? Doesn't look like it, looks, looks like we're good to go there. Uh, but there can get a lot of sand in these strainers, especially if you're, you know, a sandbar boater. Put the basket back in, make it flush. Now, a lot of guys, um, usually on larger yachts and stuff, but you can do it here, you can put bromine tablets um, like from a pool, you can buy them from a pool supply company, bromine tablets in these strainers. And basically it acts like bleach and it'll help keep your system cleaner. Um, I like to use them in air conditioning systems because eventually all of that will get run through your air conditioning lines and it'll keep that growth out of there, uh, which kind of, you know, is preventative maintenance. So you don't have to do an acid wash or an acid flush so often. So let's get this cat back on. See how tricky this is. You gotta, and you can't cross thread it because if you cross thread it, then uh, you get a real problem. There it goes. It locked in. Nice and smooth. Okay, if you cross thread that plastic into that into that metal strainer, I have to go get a new one. It'll never be right again. Turn your seacocks back on. Make sure you don't have any leaks. And also, see these green wires? These green wires are your bond wires. Uh, your bond wires connects all the grounds on the boat and it helps prevent electrolysis and galvanic corrosion. So always make sure that those are good and they're attached where they're supposed to be. They don't have any corrosion, all that good stuff. So there you go, guys. That's how you basically uh, check a sea strainer to its simplest form. Um, you know, this is a couple year old boat, so these strainers are pretty, uh, pretty new, but uh, obviously they make older versions that are a little more complicated, you know, just different setups, but this is basically how you do it. Thanks again.